Welcome to Malmö. Welcome to the Western Harbor. Welcome to Vavstaden. Welcome to Dockan. Welcome to Media Evolution. What makes this place special? What makes this place special? Whose giant's shoulders are we standing on? Who inhabits this place? Who are visiting it daily? Who cares about it from afar? Who cares about maintaining community, sense of safety, inclusion and equal rights to prosperity? Whose voices are included? What does the people of the region of this, part, this particular part of the world desire for its futures? My name is Martin Tönkvist. Uh, I work at Media Evolution. And we're a community-owned, not-for-profit organization. Uh, 180 organizations, on, organizations are currently uh, members. Uh, last year, people from 900 organizations participated in things that we do. Uh, and since 12 years, we run Media Evolution, this building that we're in. Uh, and ironically, uh, we've always talked about this as the house, our house despite the fact that it's for the first 11 part, 11 years of its existence was called Media Evolution City. And as you could hear, I have a lot of questions. Uh, and we are an organization that have more questions than answers. And everything that, that we're about is gathering people and together figuring futures out and figuring uh, what our needs and desires are. And this summer I, I read a book by um, a Swedish filmmaker called Roy Andersson. Uh, and it's an adaptation of a talk that he gave at the Gothenburg's film festival. It's called Vår tids rädsla för allvar, Our Age, uh, Fear of Seriousness. And in it he speaks about uh, the complex image. Uh, and he makes this distinction between uh, different perspectives or different lenses that you could use as a filmmaker. Um, and he uses two um, pieces of art uh, to, to make, this, make his point. And it's two uh, quite um, <clears throat> uh, scary images. And this is the first one. And this is, in his opinion, like the scariest image that he's ever seen. Uh, and it's uh, an image from um, the, um, the 17th century uh, by a, a French artist called Jacques Callot. Uh, and as you can see, and what makes this interesting is that there is something at the center, but there's also a lot of things around it. And he makes the distinction between this image and another horrifying image uh, that uh, Francisco Goya uh, made. Uh, in the beginning of the 19th century, that is equally horrifying, but it also doesn't show a lot of things surrounding it. So if you compare this picture that, that he tried to sort of makes the point of, this is the complex image where you can see sort of the bystanders, the people who were also at the scene uh, when um, the terrifying thing was happening. Uh, and obviously he uses this a lot in, in his filmmaking to try to sort of show people that are like seeing the horror themselves. Um, <clears throat> and so he talks about the value of the complex image and letting people themselves explore both the horrors and the opportunity of the things that we like rather like ho hype or try to sort of have at our focus. Um, and today uh, we're going to talk about the complex life between the things that we usually focus on and in this case maybe offices, workspaces and buildings. And I think it's interesting that even in our age, we're sort of starting to be interested in zooming out a little bit. So this is a, another very famous painting by Johannes Vermeer uh, from the 17th century girl with a pearl earring 
Um, and you know, for all of you who's been playing around with uh, new AI technologies, you know that you can now do these out paintings, and where you can sort of teach the AI to sort of set the scene for this image, and and you get things like this, uh, where we say, sort of, oh, okay, so all of a sudden, this face of a woman tells a lot more about maybe who she is, where she came from, and so on. So at Media Evolution, we've tried to, for the past years, think about this a lot. And instead of thinking about the house, try to think about the place. Uh, because there is something weird with us and you know all of our organizations focusing so much about of our efforts in sort of within the walls of our our offices. Um, and for those of you who are at the conference yesterday and saw the final keynote speaker, um, Nippon Mehta, he spoke about, you know, trying to play a, an infinite game instead of a finite game, instead of trying to win, trying to continue uh, the game, which is also, by the way, a great book that is in our library, uh, Infinite and Finite, Finite and Infinite Games by James P. Cars. Um, and he talks about how we can go from accumulation to circulation and how we can sort of take this idea of sort of being at the center of things to, to have much more distributed networks and how we, can, how we can serve and how we can be in service and how we can be generous. So this leads us to the, uh, the title of this seminar, uh, Life in a Professional Neighborhood. And, you know, what is that even? Why, why, are we, why are we going to work and why are we, you know, we're putting so much effort in, in sort of into the neighborhoods in which we live and we try to sort of nurture the public spaces in between them. Uh, I think there is an opportunity to, to think m much more about the spaces between uh, the offices in which we work and in which ways we can collaborate between companies at a site like this but also in other places in the world.